But let's get back to the topic at hand because uh, Jordan, Jordan Harbinger brought forth to, for me the topic of understanding the imposter syndrome. Um, and again, you know, I was introduced to this podcast by a friend of mine who said, you got to check this guy out because he's doing nothing but uh, wanting to improve people uh, through, you know, inner, uh, shining a light within their internal processes. And I was like, well, that's what I'm all about. So I want to check it out. And I ran into the episode about imposter complex. And imposter complex, again, is that thing where we don't feel like we deserve to be where we are. And I shouldn't be this guy. Because to tell you the truth, this awesome stuff that's been going on with Mind Hacking Happiness the whole time, every step of the way, I have struggled with the imposter complex of I am not the guy that should be educating people on this. I don't have a PhD in back of my name or any letters in back of my name for that matter. Um, I am not a recognized world-leading expert in these fields, at least I didn't used to be. I'm kind of starting to be pushed into that, uh, into that realm, uh, especially in artificial emotional intelligence and being able to model the mind and human emotions for computers. But beyond being the guy who actually modeled empathy and compassion for computer systems so that hopefully AI won't eventually kill us one day. My thoughts were constantly along the lines of, you know, I'm not, I'm not a Dr. Phil, I'm not a Eckhart Tolle, I'm not a, you know, a Deepak Chopra or somebody like that that understands uh, all of this uh, amazing, cool stuff that you can then use to improve your life. Like, who am I to be telling people how to improve their existence uh, you know, when I don't even, I may have a psych, psychology 101 course under my belt some point in community college before I transferred to a major college. Uh, that's my extent of my education. How am I this person who has finished Aristotle's work in modeling emotions and our, in understanding our emotional turmoil to the point that we can then turn it off? How am I this person? And that started from day one. I had this epiphany about how the human mind worked and how my personal pain and suffering worked and how to turn it off. And I uh, wrote that in the blue book, by the way, if you wanna read that story, that's fine. Um, and I immediately, I was like, okay, this is cool. This is a benefit to me. I started talking to other people about it and all of a sudden they started telling me, well, that's how my stuff works too. And right away, right away, the imposter complex reared its ugly head in me and understand, I was a confident guy at the point. At this point, I was. I had achieved the American dream. I was uh, a a really smart engineer in this very specific field of this supercomputer company that was the leading supercomputer company in the planet. And I was this young uh, wunderkind type of uh, guy who was doing amazing things at a young age. I was confident that I was on that leading edge of being able to do some really cool stuff right away with this area of study, I was, well, I can't be this guy. I can't be the guy who figured this stuff out. You know, there's gotta be something that I'm missing, right? There's gotta be something that uh, I haven't read yet that, you know, somebody else has written about or that somebody else figured out or that somebody else has published. And, and so I went to, I'm not somebody who wants to waste time. So I went to one of the world's leading specialists in the field who'd spoken on the stage at TED about this very stuff, about mind modeling and emotions modeling and understanding human emotions and things like that. And I said, okay, let me explain to you this thing. What have I missed? Where, what's the book that I need to read? Who's the, who's the, the world leading specialist that I need to talk to that has written all the papers that explain all this stuff. And, uh, you know, pat me on my ass on the way out the door, hand me my hat and say, nice try kid. Um, and she told me, and she's one of the people at the MIT Effective Computing Lab, whose job it is to review models of human mind and emotion so as to help build them for computers. One of the smartest people in the world. She said, no, actually, this may be the most elegant model for the cognitive catalysis of human emotion that I've ever seen. And no one's made this approach before. You need to publish this immediately because someone is going to steal it. And then she told me about uh, all the politics and all of the infighting that's, that happens in academia that I didn't even know about, um, where people will just upright steal your shit 
and claim it as theirs. And then she's like, and if, and then, you know, then you're going to be arguing that it, this is your stuff when they have letters after their name. So who's going to win that fight? And so, yeah. And so I sent her, she asked for an, a white paper. I sent her the white paper uh, up to MIT. And I also sent it to Georgia Tech and not to UCLA and a couple other institutions um, who were interested in this stuff as well. And it turned out that my model, the academics couldn't poke any holes in it. And that it was actually accurate to all of the neuroscience studies and all the emotion studies that have been done previously and provided some new definitions of stuff that people are still arguing about today. Like people are still, psych psychologists right now, you'll find a pair of psychologists sharing a cup of tea or a salad somewhere arguing over the definition of anger and what makes anger when I knocked it out almost a decade ago. Um, and so, you know, when we've got some new material from that, and I, and I was like, I can't be the guy. And then all of a sudden I talked to this world leading specialist says, you might be the guy. And so uh, still from there, I was like, okay, maybe. And so then I started to do this other podcast that we had done 150 episodes on, and I started to explain the process of pain and suffering to folks to try to help them figure out how to turn their own stuff down to see if we could get some uh, responses. And it was just on a whim. It was just like, look, let's put out this previous podcast and see what happens. Put up a web page, see what happens. And it started to transform people's lives. And it got, started getting four, seven, four, eight reviews out of five stars. And it was on New and Notables and What's Hot and, you know, like pretty regularly back when podcasts were still uh, up and coming. And um, at the point that we got the feedback about the content being transformational, that's when I said, okay, I got to step back. And I got to really take this seriously. And the other thing that was happening at the time is that this theory that I'd put together, it was just basically a theory. After I'd sent it to MIT and UGA, or uh, Georgia Tech and uh, UCLA, and um, it was all theory. The science between 2012, 2007 to 2012 caught up in a big hurry. The science that wasn't done, that hadn't been done previously, was all of a sudden being knocked out. Like every three months, a major article was being written and published in a major publication that was proving every bit of this model in my hand key happiness completely correct. There's not a portion of this Previous theory, I guess we need to test the whole thing still, so it's probably still officially a theory. But there was, wasn't a portion of this that was incorrect. I'd nailed it, uh, at least all the individual components. And so at that point, I was like, all right, well, now I can write a book that leads with the science, that starts with the studies, that starts with the stories of the people in the fMRI machine and watching their brain do this and that and yada, yada, yada. And so I did that. And that's what came out with Mind Hacking Happiness. It was actually going to be one huge book. And then the editor was like, no, <laughs> we're going to chop that sucker right down the middle. This seems to be a good spot. Um, and we'll do a two volume set. We put the books out, led with the science. And I was still feeling that imposter syndrome. It was, I can't be this guy. There's, I'm going to publish this book. And there's going to be somebody who steps out of those shadows and says, oh, yeah, we've done this stuff decades ago. And, and here it is. And thanks for redesigning this in a less efficient way in a in a stupider way and yada 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 i was like i can't be this guy and uh that didn't happen no one stepped out of the shadows and no one uh was able to say that this stuff isn't original and in fact uh i got a chance to meet eve ekman and if you know uh, uh paul ekman the name paul he's one of the gods of uh, emotions studies in the history of psychology. Uh, he and his daughter Eve uh, recently put out a um, an atlas of emotions to explain emotions to the layperson and to group it into. And they they followed the data. They followed all the studies and they correlated the data and they put together this atlas of emotions that kind of explains the grouping, explains the severity levels, and all this other stuff. The same exact stuff that I put in Mind Hacking Happiness when I came at it from a different direction. So their stuff kind of validated uh, what I had done in the Mind Hacking Happiness book. And I still was, yeah, I can't be this guy. I, I can't, uh, this, you know, this is, this is weird. This is too strange. But the feedback, the feedback was what saved this process yet again. Because the feedback of after putting the Mind Hacking Happiness books out, the feedback of like Julie popping up and saying, hey, I cured my addiction with your book. 
thank you, and let's put a program together for it. And I said, yeah, let's friggin' do that. That was amazing, because that's an intractable problem that people have been struggling with for hundreds and thousands of years of not being able to control their mind's uh, attraction to a substance to numb a pain that exists below their regular waking consciousness that they can't cure, all of a sudden we're curing that with showing people how their mind works and giving them the opportunity to change the variables within their mind that their mind uses to create the pain in the first place. That's fucking blowing my mind. And now we're getting this feedback from these veterans who are saying, my PTSD is going away. And I almost committed suicide. Or I tried to commit suicide. And I, I've come back from that because of what I've read in your book. I mean, that kind of stuff, that kind of stuff just blows me away.